to section 2.6b, rational functions. Today we're going to learn about finding slant asymptotes. So far you've been able to find vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, and today uh, we'll learn about slant asymptotes. So if d is greater than or equal to 1 and n equals d plus 1, there is a slant asymptote. So a quick review about what little d is. Remember that um, if you have a rational function, it, it can be written as um, one polynomial over another. And we often call the numerator polynomial uh, big N of x, and we call the denominator polynomial big D of little, of little x, or big D of x. All right, so um, that's nothing new. We did that in the last section when we introduced uh, rational functions. And recall that little d is simply the degree of the denominator, and little n is the degree of the numerator. Okay, so what this first line is saying is that in a special case for rational functions, if the degree of the denominator is 1 or greater, in other words, it could be, you know, x or x plus 1, something of a degree 1 or, or greater, um, and the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. That's why it says n equals d plus 1. Simply stating that the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. In that special case, there is a slant asymptote, a slant asymptote. And let's, uh, on this screen, we're going to see what that looks like. So when you're going to find, uh, first of all, you have to identify whether the function has a slant asymptote or not. And then once you identify that it does, to find it, you use longer synthetic division. So here's how. Let's look at this sample rational function. Okay, our um, big N of x is x squared minus x. That's the numerator. Our big D of x is x plus 1. That's the denominator. Okay, our little n, which is the degree of the numerator, is 2. Our little d, which is the degree of the denominator, is 1. Now, since... Um, 1 is greater than or equal to 1, so it passes the first condition. And since 2 is 1 more than 1, so it passes the second condition, there must be a slant asymptote for this rational function. Now, to find it, we use long or synthetic division. Notice that um, this denominator here is in the form x plus 1. Therefore, it's a good candidate for synthetic division because x plus 1 is the same as x minus negative 1. Same exact thing, x minus negative 1 is the same as x plus 1. And whenever, whenever you have something in the form of x minus c, you can use synthetic, synthetic division, as we did uh, in an earlier section. And you can refer back to your notes on long and synthetic division if you need to uh, refresh your memory. Um, let's set up synthetic division, then, for this rational function. And we're going to divide x squared minus x. To, we're going to divide that by x plus 1. Okay, so... Um, just to be crystal clear on everything, uh, this 1 is here because uh, that's the coefficient of x squared, 1x squared. And this negative 1 is here because that's the coefficient of x, negative 1x. And I have a 0 here as a placeholder because in this numerator, x squared minus x, there's no constant term. There's only an x squared term and an x term. There's no constant term, and therefore I put 0 for my constant term there. Okay, negative 1 is over here because with synthetic division it's x minus something. And so x minus negative 1 is x plus 1. That's why I have negative 1 here. And then we simply proceed with synthetic division uh, as discussed earlier. Uh, bring the 1 down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That's why I have negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. That's why I have negative 2 here. Negative 2 times negative 1, you go back to the divisor, is uh, 2. And 0 plus 2 is 2, therefore there's a remainder of 2. The quotient is x minus 2. And um, I get that because the coefficient here is 1, and so that's 1x. And this here is negative 2, therefore I have negative 2. And my remainder, my remainder is 2 over x plus 1. 2, that's my remainder here, which synthetic division tells me. And I put it over uh, the divisor x plus 1, and that's how I write it. That's how I write it. This is the quotient. Now, the good news about slant asymptotes is you don't have to worry about remainders at all. You can, you can forget about the remainder once you do uh, the division. All you have to look at 
all you have to look at for um, finding slat asymptotes is this right here. That's it. All you have to look at is that part of the quotient, the non-remainder part of the quotient. So the line y equals x minus 2 is the slant asymptote. Okay, this non-remainder part of the quotient gives you the equation of a line where you have a slope and a y-intercept. So uh, 1 is my slope here, and my y-intercept is negative 2. And therefore, the line y equals x minus 2 is the slant asymptote. Now, let's see what that looks like. This is the function graphed. And, um, of course, it also has a vertical asymptote, and it has a y-intercept and, and x-intercepts. But I'm not going to talk about those for now, because I just want you to focus on the slant asymptote. Notice that we have, we have the line. We have it drawn uh, as a dotted line, as we normally do with asymptotes. I labeled it y equals x minus 2. Notice that it has a slope of 1, and it has a y-intercept of negative 2. And also notice how the curve behaves. Um, just as the curve approaches a vertical asymptote but never touches it, so also the curve approaches the slant asymptote but never touches it. Okay, so that's how slant asymptotes work. It's how you find them. And um, I'm going to go through a couple more examples just because you may have never seen slant asymptotes before. And so it helps to see more examples in order to learn things better. Okay, so uh, repeating again for the sake of clarity, finding slant asymptotes, d is greater than or equal to 1, and n equals d plus 1, there's a slant asymptote. To find it, use longer synthetic division. x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 1. This is the next example we're going to look at. We're going to do synthetic division because we have that convenient form x minus 1. And carrying out the synthetic division, once again, uh, this 1 is because we have 1x squared. This negative 1 is because we have negative x. And this negative 2 is because we have negative 2. And this 1 is because, in this case, our c, for the x minus c form, is 1. OK, continuing with the synthetic division, we carry it out. And we find uh, that we now have a remainder negative 2. And therefore, we can write the quotient as x minus 2 over x minus 1. OK, I got my 1 here. That's x. I have my 0 here, which means there's no constant term in the quotient. And I do have a remainder, negative 2, and so I can write that as minus 2 over x minus 1. OK, now remember, the good news is all I have to worry about is the non-remainder part of the quotient. And therefore, uh, my slant asymptote is y equals x. The line y equals x is my slant asymptote. This is what the graph looks like. I've labeled y equals x, slant asymptote. You see how the curve behaves um, with the slant asymptote and the vertical asymptote here. Don't worry about the other elements of this graph, because right now I want you simply to zero in on the slant asymptote so that you will understand them. First of all, um, when they exist, okay, now I'm circling this example function, they exist when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, provided that the degree of the denominator is one or greater. Okay, so this passes that test, therefore there is a slant asymptote. We found it by synthetic division, and now we graphed it using a dotted line for the line y equals x. Last example, and then we'll get into um, examples that you can do on your own to help you learn. Let's look at this function, 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Um, and we see that it, uh, it fits the criteria for slant asymptotes because the, um, the little d is 1 or greater. Okay, we have a little d of 2. We have uh, a little n, degree of the numerator, of 3. 3 is 1 more than 2, therefore there's a slant asymptote. Now in this case, in this case, as you probably have guessed by now, synthetic division is not the way to go because this denominator um, is not of the form x minus c. And therefore, we're going to use good old long division. And you can review those notes if you need to from earlier on uh, in this chapter. And long division looks like this. Uh, 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2. Proceeding with the long division, 2x up there. Uh, we end up with 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x. Subtract that from the top. End up with negative 7x squared minus 6x plus 1. 
uh, what do I have to multiply the divisor by to get that first term of negative 7 x squared? It's negative 7. Put that up there, uh, multiply, then you subtract, and you end up with your remainder of 15x plus 15. Therefore, the quotient is 2x minus 7 plus 15x plus 15 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, and uh, as usual, we simply zero in on the non-remainder part of the quotient, 2x minus 7. So the line y equals 2x minus 7 is the slant asymptote. That's the slant asymptote. Graphing it now, um, you see how the uh, dotted line 2x minus 7 is there. Um, these grid marks, by the way, go by 2s, right? So uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And that's why this cross is here, because that would be negative 7, the y-intercept of negative 7. Uh, slope of 2, and sure enough, the curve approaches the slant asymptote but never touches it. Now, you may be wondering, why is this empty ball here? Well, the empty ball is there because uh, the point x equals 1 is not in the domain. Uh, it's not in the domain of this function. Now, we're going we're gonna to return to that uh, a little bit later in this, in this video. But just in case you're wondering, um, it's because 1 is not in the domain. Now, neither is, neither is negative 2. Okay, negative 2 is not in the domain, neither is negative 1. Okay, um, and since negative 1 is not in the domain, I put an empty ball there, and negative 2 is not in the domain, I have a vertical asymptote. Um, but that's because, as we, we talked about in the last section, um, you only have vertical asymptotes at zeros of the denominator after you've simplified the function. And negative 2 is the only zero of the denominator after I simplify. Now, don't worry about that right now, because on this screen, you simply have to focus on the slant asymptote. That's good enough for this screen. Just to focus on the existence of the slant asymptote, how to find it, and how to graph it. Okay, what I'm going to give you on this screen is something that you have to write down carefully. Write it down word for word, exactly as everything appears, because what is going to be on this screen is a nine-step procedure. A nine-step procedure for graphing any rational function graphing any rational function better than your calculator could. Okay, better than your calculator could. Now, um, I'm going to be going through this point by point, and um, just to take the pressure off, uh, you will be allowed to carry this nine-step process to the exam. So it's not like you have to memorize all nine steps. Uh, you know, normally I, I make you memorize formulas that you need and stuff, but for this uh, nine-step set of instructions, you can bring it on a card to the exam, but make sure you write it down accurately, step by step. Okay, so first, step one is find the domain using the unsimplified form of f of x. So you just take your raw f of x, that rational function, and you get the domain for it by, you know, figuring out which x values can't work. All right, so you don't simplify yet. You find the domain with the unsimplified form. And don't worry, I'm going to be going through specific examples uh, of each of these steps. All right, next step is simplify f of x if possible. You simplify the rational function if you can. You, you, there will be functions that you can't simplify. So you simplify if possible because that'll make the, re, the remaining steps easier. Next step, plot the y-intercept. And all you have to do there is just you know plug in 0 for x and you'll get your y-intercept. Plot the x-intercepts, which is the same thing as the, the real zeros of the function. Uh, we're not going to be plotting complex zeros, just the real zeros of the function. Then you draw your vertical asymptotes, if any. And uh, in the last section, we talked about how to find vertical asymptotes. Then you draw your horizontal asymptotes, if any. And also in the last section, we talked about horizontal asymptotes. Then, if d is greater than or equal to 1 and n equals d plus 1, you find the slant asymptotes. And you can use the simplified or the unsimplified form for doing the long or synthetic division in order to find the slant asymptote. It gives you the same exact result either way. Uh, sometimes it is easier to use the unsimplified form, um, but that's your choice, so you have a choice there. Uh, and, and by the way, while we're on that, for uh, steps 3, 4, 5, and 6, it's usually easier to use the simplified form. It makes the calculation of the y-intercept and the x-intercepts and the vertical and horizontal asymptotes uh, easier. It makes that calculation easier to use the simplified form for those steps. 
All right, step eight, plot points for x values before, between, and beyond each intercept and vertical asymptote. So basically you divide, you divide uh, the graph into intervals and you pick, you pick points that are uh, before an x or a y intercept or between two intercepts or between an intercept and an asymptote or um, to the right of any, any intercept. You just you pick values and, and that's where you have some freedom because you know you can pick any value you want that's in those intervals. And once again, when you see the examples that are coming, uh, it'll be clear what I mean by those intervals, and it'll be clear what points you can use and which points you can't. And finally, the last step, connect the dots with smooth curves, leaving an empty ball for x values that are not in the domain and are not asymptotes. All right, um, step nine is, of course, as I, I said in the last section, and a little bit in the last screen. Uh, that's where calculators fall short. They will not put an empty ball, uh, usually they won't, um, for x values that are not in the domain and are not asymptotes. Um, and we've already seen a couple examples of that, of the empty ball thing, but uh, we're gonna see more in just a bit and it'll be clear of uh, why we need to put those on the graph. So for now, just make sure that you have everything on the screen written down exactly as it appears and uh, once you've done that, you can proceed to the next screens. Okay, let's look at this example. So I'm going to um, just walk you through this first example, and then the next two you're going to do on your own as, as best you can. All right, so x to the fourth minus 1 over x squared minus x. That's a rational function. And we're going to apply all nine steps in order and you'll see that we'll be able to graph this function well. Okay, so the first step. The first step is to find the domain, to find the domain. And uh, remember the old question we ask ourselves when we're finding a domain. We look at this function, x to the fourth minus one over x squared minus x, and we ask ourselves, what x values will not work? In other words, what x values, if I plug them in, will give me an undefined result? Well, um, the only x values that won't work are the ones for which I'll get a zero in the denominator. And to solve that, you simply set x squared minus x equal to zero and solve for x. And when you do that, you get, um, you get the domain that all real numbers except zero and except one, uh, all real numbers except zero and one will work. And that's your domain. Okay, the next step is uh, to simplify. So this is how we simplify x to the fourth minus one. You, you just write it out and you try to factor when you can. Uh, x to the fourth minus one is the same as a difference of squares, x squared plus one times x squared minus one. The bottom, the denominator can be factored, factor out the x, you get x times x minus one. And then, um, then you can factor one of the differences of squares even more. x squared minus one can be factored further as x, x plus one times x minus one. And finally, uh, when you've done that, you can cancel those x minus ones and that makes this function a little simpler for you so that the remaining steps will be uh, easier. All right, third step, find the y-intercept. Well, there is no y-intercept. Why? Because zero is not in the domain, and you know that uh, finding y-intercepts is when you plug zero in for x, but since zero is not in the domain, there is no y-intercept. Uh, step four, finding the zeros. Well, um, what you do there is you simply set this simplified function equal to zero and solve for x, and the only value of x that will give me zero is negative one, because when I put negative one in for x here, negative one plus one is zero, that makes everything zero. Um, I can't put anything in for x here to get zero because it's squared, and of course the denominator uh, doesn't matter because when you're looking at zeros of rational functions, you just need to find uh, where you get zeros in the numerator. Now. This is also, a, there's another reason why it's important, uh, why it's important to simplify. Okay, because if you don't simplify, you could just look at this, uh, at this rational function and say, oh, well, one also is a zero because one minus one is zero. But no, that x minus one gets canceled. And therefore, uh, another reason to use the simplified form f uh, as much as possible is because that will give you accurate zeros. You don't find the zeros for the unsimplified form. You find the zeros for the simplified form. All right, um, and we plot negative one zero. We plot it here. 
negative 1, 0. And um, so I've got one point, at least I've got one point on the graph. Now, vertical asymptote is x equals 0. How do I know that? I look at my simplified form. Okay, remember, I have to look at the simplified form, not the unsimplified form. And in my simplified form, okay, the only thing that will give me 0 in the denominator is x equals 0. Therefore, x equals 0 is my vertical asymptote. Now, I could draw the vertical asymptote uh, over the y-axis as, as a dotted line, but uh, I'm not going to do that because it just uh, wastes time. No horizontal asymptote. How do I know that? I know that because based on what you learned in the last section, if the degree of, uh, of the numerator is greater than the degree, the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. There's no slant asymptote. Why? Because if you look at this original function here, um, you know, the degree of the numerator is two more than the degree of the denominator. So there's no slant asymptote because that's only when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. And now I choose negative two, negative one half, and one half as values. Why are those good values? Well, because negative two is before an intercept. Negative one half is between an intercept and an asymptote. And one half is after an asymptote. And, um, you know, you could have chosen one, but the problem with one is it's not in the domain, and therefore it's not a good value to choose. All right, now if we plot uh, negative two, negative one half, and one half, I get that point, which has the x-coordinate of, of negative two, a y-coordinate of five halves, and then I get this point, which has um, the x-coordinate of negative one-half, and I get this point, which has the x-coordinate of one-half. And so I've plotted those points. Finally, connect the, connect the dots, and remember that we're going to leave an open value, an open ball for uh, any x-value that is not in the domain and is not an asymptote. And this is what it looks like. Okay, We've connected the dots in the only way that we can the only, only possible way to connect the dots because you know that this can't go back down since there is no other x-intercept so it must go all the way up. You also know that it goes down here because the uh, y-axis uh, or the line x equals zero is an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. Similarly up here you know that on the right it has to go up because there's no other x-intercept here so it can't go down. And you also know that it has to go up here because um, x equals zero is a vertical asymptote. And finally, why the open ball? Because uh, the value x equals 1 is not in the domain, and it's not a vertical asymptote. And therefore, we have to represent it with an empty ball on the graph. OK, the next example, x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right, so at this point, you should be able to apply each step in order and graph this accurately. Uh, so pause the video, do the best you can with this, uh, apply each step in order um, exactly as, as, the instruction, as the instructions say. You should end up with the right graph. Okay, so pause then resume when you have a graph. Okay, going through the solution, um, the domain is all real numbers except negative 1 and 3. And of course, we found that by simply setting this denominator equal to zero and solving for x. Since um, since the, my only restriction on this domain uh, would be would be getting zero in the denominator. Next step, simplify. And so for that, you just factor. And when you factor, you can conveniently cancel those x minus threes, and then you have something a lot easier to work with. Finding the y uh, intercept is just plugging 0 in for x, and you get um, the point 0, 3, which we now plot. Finding the 0 is negative 3, 0, and you get that simply by setting this simplified form, x plus 3 over x plus 1, setting that equal to 0. And sure enough, the only value that will give me 0 is what will give me 0 in the numerator, and that's negative 3. And so I can plot negative 3, 0 as my one and only zero for this rational function. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one because that value of negative one will give me zero in this denominator of the simplified function. Um, 
then I get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Why? Because the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, and therefore it's simply the ratio of their coefficients. 1 over 1 is 1, and therefore y equals 1 is the horizontal asymptote. Um, there's no slant asymptote because it just doesn't fit the criteria for that. I choose my values. You could have chosen different values as long as they were in, in the right intervals. Negative 4, I get a point there. Negative 2, I get a point there. Uh, negative 1 half, I get a point right there. Over here, just in case you didn't see that, where I'm circling now with the, the mouse arrow. And 1, I plot that here. And that's going to make it easy for me now to go to step 9 which is connect the dots and leave an empty ball if necessary, and this is what I have. Notice that the dots are connected in the only way that they can be connected, the only way that makes sense in the context of this problem, and I have an empty ball at 3 because 3 is not in the domain of this rational function. Okay, last example. Before you freak out, um, it is possible to do this and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do this in two parts. If you think you can handle the challenge and simplify this on your own, then pause now and, and resume, and then you're going to pause again. If you don't think you can handle that challenge, that's okay. Just keep watching. I'm going to go through um, a simplification, and then you can pause. All right, so you can do this in two parts depending on what you're ready for. All right, the domain is simply setting that denominator equal to zero. We solve for x, we get the domain is all real numbers except one and two. And here's a simplification. Uh, we can group these terms, see these terms up here, two x cubed plus x squared minus eight x minus four. We can group them by factoring out, um, noticing that, um, follow the mouse arrow again in the upper left part of the screen. Two is to one as eight is to four. Okay, so that's our pattern, that's our pattern. Therefore, we can factor out an x squared here. Well, I get x squared times 2x plus 1. Factor out a negative 4 here. I get negative 4 times 2x plus 1. And there you can see the pattern clearly. The bottom is easy to factor. It's just x minus 2 times x minus 1. And then you end up with this, x squared minus 4 times 2x plus 1. Now, x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, and therefore I can factor it further to x minus 2 times x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. And then here, conveniently, you can cancel out the x minus 2s, and you have your simplified form. Okay, now, if you watched without pausing to that point, this is where you definitely want to pause, because you're, you're capable of doing the rest of the nine steps on your own and getting the right graph. So pause, do that, and then resume when you have a graph. Okay, going through the steps, we find our y-intercept by plugging in uh, 0 for x. And uh, when we do that in the simplified form, we end up with a y-intercept of negative 2. And I've plotted that down here, negative 2, which I'm now circling with the mouse arrow. Okay, step 4 is finding the zeros. The zeros are negative 2 and negative 1 half. So I can plot those at negative 2 and negative 1 half. Those are my zeros, my x-intercepts. Then the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. I know that because that's the only value that will give me 0 in the denominator of the simplified form x equals 1 is my vertical asymptote. No horizontal, no horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And yes, there is a slant asymptote, and I find that by long division. Of course, you could also, you know, look at the simplified form. You could just uh, re-multiply that, that numerator and then do synthetic division there. That's fine. It'll, you'll get the same result. Or simply do long division on the original form, the unsimplified form, and you'll come up with, um, with the non-remainder part of the quotient being 2x plus 7. 2x plus 7. That is the slant asymptote. We draw that. Then we uh, plot points. So negative 3, negative 1, 3 are good values. You could have chosen uh, other ones that are in, in those intervals. That's fine. Plot negative 3, that's there. Plot negative 1, that's there. Plot 3, that's way up there. And now this is taking shape and there's only one way to connect those dots, and that is this. Okay, connect the dots, and this is what I get. This is what I get. Um, that portion, nice smooth curve, and this portion, nice smooth curve. And uh, notice the empty ball. The empty ball appears at uh, the value x equals 2 
because the value x equals 2 is not part of the domain that we found in step 1. Okay, here's the classwork. Page 194, please uh, copy these numbers down, and we'll see you in class.